Y'all know that song from the new Guilty Gear game that like, it's society, your society, that, that song? Well, that's the song that was in my head this whole episode. Only replace the word society with It's anxiety, your anxiety, your anxiety. That's two videos that have opened with a song. I better stop that before it becomes a trend. Anyway, hello everybody. I'm doing perfectly fine today. Nothing wrong with me. How's it going with you? Welcome back to our weekly ReZero discussion video. Today we're going to talk all about episode 8, the value of life. But before we do so, I actually have some news for you. So if you haven't done so yet, you should hit that sub button. But right beside that sub button, there's a little join button that you can click now to actually join the channel as a member. So you can actually get a nifty little badge next to your name and some emotes that you can spam in the chat. And and joining as a member is also a great way of helping me and keep this channel afloat, you know, keep my head above water and all that stuff. So if you choose to donate to the channel by joining as a member, I'd super appreciate it. Even just considering it, I really appreciate it. But without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into this. Oh, I'm gonna need another cup of coffee for this one. If I could describe this episode in one word, it would be very simple. A very simple word. It would just be, ah! The whole thing, just just all A, just ah, that's the episode. Um, the biggest note I have is just anxiety in, in all caps. Um, and honestly, like, again, we don't really talk about the episode scene by scene anymore, but basically every scene in the episode is worth talking about to some degree. Um, but I'm gonna just go in order of just ah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go in order. I feel like this episode broke me. I'm gonna go in order of ah <laughs> from top anxiety to the least anxiety inducing thing. Um, and we're gonna start with top anxiety, peak anxiety. And that is the scene with Lasagna Boy. Uh, when this fool, when, <laughs> when Garf walks in, when my Lasagna Boy arrives on the scene, nerves are at an 11. Okay, like nerves are peak as as peak as they possibly could be. I'm thinking like, oh, we are screwed, right? Like this is bad. Everything like this. This is this is not good. Like basically, I'm just like, this is a peak. Not good. It, he is. He looks pissed, right? And I'm thinking like, okay, he has every right to be pissed, right? Because they, they like to him, he thinks that he's doing the right thing. And I respect that he thinks that he's doing the right thing, even though he's doing the wrong thing. <laughs> But he doesn't know that, right? He smells the witch's miasma, right? The scent of the witch on him. So he's like, clearly Subaru's a bad guy. But we know, no! Like, you are stopping him from doing what needs to be done right now. But again, Lasagna Boy don't know that. So my OT3 and Subaru, um, the, like the, the squad of season two, Ram, Otto, Garf, and, and Subaru are suddenly put into this like situation where, oh no, we got to split the fellowship. And that's not gonna be the only Lord of the Rings reference I make. In fact, there's gonna be a huge uh, comparison of relationships from like this to Lord of the Rings, but we'll save that for later. But for right now, my OT3, and y'all knew this, y'all lied to me, you lied to me. <laughs> Sorry, I'm mad. I shouldn't have yelled at you. I'm sorry. But y'all lied to me. Because <laughs> I said, like, you know what? I kind of see... I kind of see Otto, Ram, and, and Garf as an OT3, you know? Like, yeah, like I feel like it's an OT3. And you lied to me! <laughs> you all set! Remember when, when these videos were calm? Remember when these, these were calm, cool, and collected, like, lo-fi anime reviews for you to chill out and, and study to? No! <laughs> I'm pissed! And you're gonna know that I'm pissed! <laughs> Yo, well, I'm not, it's not that I'm pissed. I love this episode, but it broke me, goddammit. Because <laughs> y'all said, y'all said that this would be an OT3 to keep, like, oh, you think it's an OT3, do you? Well, don't you worry. Um, and, like, don't you worry. Our boy agrees with you. Don't you worry. Tape also, also agrees that they're an OT3. Y'all were liars. Liars. <laughs> I mean, in fairness, what's a good OT3? What's a good ship in general? without some, you know, some angst. And the fact that my boy kills Otto and likely killed Ram too, um, you know, that's some angst. That's, that, that's angsty right there. Um, Y'all lied to me. <laughs> Look how they massacred my boy. 
Look how Garf massacred my boy. Let's just talk about it, because I'm all over the map this week. <sighs> I can't even show you what he did. I don't even know the screenshot that I, I'm going to use. My son. My Otto. My precious boy. My baby, my baby boy! Otto, man. Look. Look. I know that Subaru will return by death. In fact, he does so at the end of the episode. So Otto's fine. Doesn't mean it hurts less, you know? Doesn't doesn't mean it hurts any less. And, and my girl, like, you know Ram probably didn't make it out of there. Like, and, and Arlem, man, the Arlem villagers too. Like, what, what the freak, lasagna boy, my... Like, and listen, like, this doesn't diminish my love of Garf. Like, Lazani Boy out here doing what he thinks is best, and I'm assuming when he's in that bestial form, he doesn't have much control, like the Hulk or something. And I would like to point out that Garf turns into Garfield, but a giant, crazy version of Garfield. But, yeah, you know, Lazani Boy. I, I suddenly feel even more secure in the Lazani Boy nickname. But, yeah, my OT3 was, was literally ripped in twain in front of me. And... I am not okay. <laughs> it wasn't just the fact that Otto gets ripped apart in front of me. It's the fact that Otto notices that, that Garf is raising his big ass paw and he's about to bring the paw down on Subaru and my boy, my best boy in fact, pushes Subaru out of the way. And holy shit, man. Like my mind broke. Like, I felt like Subaru in that moment, just like, Garf, you! Like, I was like, no, my boy! And he, like, he died protecting his friend. Because that is, like, Otto viewed him as his friend. And Subaru said the same, and Otto finally found a friend, and he died protecting that friend. And then the Arlem villagers are like, we'll buy you time, get out of here! And I'm like, not the villagers, god damn it! Like, I really like the Arlem villagers. They've had, like, an interesting story in their connection with, in, like, in their connection with Amelia and Subaru and all this shit. So I actually care about these villagers. Like, that's the thing. Top A, nine times out of ten, I don't give a shit about the starting villagers. Like, in most isekai, I don't care about the villagers. ReZero makes me give a shit, so when they go down buying Subaru time, it breaks my heart. And Patty! Patty! Like, like when Patty picks, picks him up and Patrice just fucking throws him, and I'm like, no! Like, oh my god, man. Like, and then the freaking crystal thing, and oh, we'll get into that in a second. But like, just, it, it crushed me, man. It, it, I don't know. Just, it just, it, all I can keep circling back to is that freaking Godfather quote, just look at how they massacred my boy. Like, that's literally it. Like, when I saw him get pushed Subaru away, I was like, look at how they massacred my boy. Look at what Tape did! <laughs> I know he's gonna fix it. In fact, he does by the end of the episode, but it's like, bruh, just because you fix it <laughs> doesn't mean the emotional scars, doesn't mean the pain of seeing them die hurts any less. <laughs> like, it still hurts. It still hurts. I feel Subaru. I feel him. Because just because he he comes back from death does not mean that the emotional weight of that is gone. It's still there. That is not even the end of it. Because when all this is happening, that weird crystal thing glows and Subaru wakes up back in the holding cell and I'm thinking like oh did he return by death did it did it bl did like the crystal blow him up no he clearly still has the battle damage so all that shit still happened um and Subaru like awakens to see winter and I'm thinking what 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 are we in purgatory what happened but no it's not purgatory like I mean it, it probably wasn't I don't friggin know I don't I don't know this scene also screwed with me um and I'm sure the only thing I'm showing on here is a white rabbit. And listen, man, I've played enough fantasy games, I've seen enough Monty Python to know that Subaru made a goddamn mistake when he saw a white rabbit and thought, oh, it's just a little Usagi. It's just a little white rabbit. What's a little white rabbit gonna do? It's just a little white rabbit. No, Subaru, that's bad. When in the history of fantasy has a white rabbit ever induced anything other than fear? Okay, listen, man, I've, I, hmm. Y'all knew 
Did like I guarantee you like there's gonna be some people who like are just in ReZero who aren't like big fantasy fans or at the very least have not seen Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Um, who saw this white rabbit and they thought, aww, and the answer to that is not aww, it is run, okay? In the, <laughs> the second I saw that thing, I'm like, oh god, this is gonna be bad, right? And Super was like, aww, it's just a white rabbit, like, and my thing too is like, I I'm still trying to wrap my head around the fact as to the, like, as, like, my faves just died, Subaru woke up in a winter wonderland, <laughs> and everybody in Sanctuary is gone. The bed where my my husbando laid is is like all a mess. So he's not there. It's not like that, it's it's not that, that they like were, it's not that this is purgatory, it's that people were there and now they are gone. And seemingly they left in a goddamn hurry. Like whatever happened, they left food, they left like clothes asunder, like whatever happened to, to Sanctuary, it happened fast. So I don't know what the hell. It's clearly been abandoned for a while. So I'm still trying to wrap my head around that. And as this is happening, Subaru, my friggin' sweet boy, <laughs> my Subaru, my dumb, idiotic, but sweet, well-meaning boy, <laughs> goddamn, reaches out to the little Usagi, the little Usagi. This little white rabbit, and I'm thinking, what, 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 I'm still, like, my head is elsewhere, what are you doing, Subaru? I can't take my eyes off you for a second. And this fool loses his hand as the white rabbit bites his finger off, and I'm not, I'm only gonna show you the rabbit, because, listen, I've been getting away with some stuff, because, like, YouTube seems to be like, okay, you can get away with some stuff because it's an animation, right? So I, you can get away with showing stuff in this, it, as long as it's fictional. I'm not even gonna like, I'm not even gonna attempt this because this, this was brutal. I'm not gonna show you none of this. Um, you just get to look at the white rabbit and look upon it with fear, with fear. Because, oh my God, dude, like it rips my boy's arm off and then suddenly his legs off. And I'm thinking like, that was fast. Like I know the white rabbit is fast, but it shouldn't be that fast. Like, like how to take off his, his leg. Oh God, there's two. Oh, there's a lot more than two. Oh God, he is surrounded. And I'm thinking like this, it, I've, I've seen my, my son die a lot. I've seen Subaru die a lot. I haven't seen him go out like that. That was vicious. That was so vicious, even vicious would be like, damn, Tape, relax. And I know I use that joke a lot, but man, it works. And in this case, like, damn, there are no words. Should have sent a poet, but then the poet would have vomited. Um, that was, that was rough, man. And this is what I mean by just anxiety. This episode was anxiety. By the way, can we give Yusuke Kobayashi just all the awards? Just all the awards. His performance as Subaru is always great, but holy shit. From the screaming as he is ripped asunder, eaten alive by many white rabbits and then to him break down crying in front of Donna. Like, Yusuke Kobayashi is just a king to me. Like, his, his performance as Subaru is also great, but you also gotta keep in mind all the other, like, roles he has, where he just brings it. This man, give him all the awards, just all the awards. I, like, uh, we don't have awards for Best Seiyuu at the Annie Awards, so I'ma just give him Best Seiyuu of the Year right now. I'm gonna just give him say with you right now. I don't think anybody's even gonna argue with me. And, like, and if you try, I will strike you down with great vengeance and furious anger. <sighs> Have I mentioned this episode broke me? <laughs> Let's talk about Subaru and Donna. Let's talk about Subaru and Donna because like, we have to. I love Donna. <laughs> Donna, I needed Donna. I, I needed a, a tea time with Donna this week. I needed that. Like when Subaru returns and he just like, he's like just bashing his head off the floor after everything. And he's like, I'm back again. I'm, so <laughs> I'm back again. Like, and he just bashes his head off the floor. And keep in mind, this, this isn't like a carpeted floor or nothing, my G. This is hard stone floor. And he bashing his brains off the floor. And all of a sudden he's like, boom. And he's back in the windows, <laughs> the windows background with, with my girl Donna. And Subaru's like, huh, 
I feel weirdly calm. That is weird. And Donna says like, yeah, uh, that's because you drank the tea last time. Uh, when you drank the tea, it actually uh, brought about some encouraging stability into your uh, your witch factor. So you're actually chill. If, if I brought you back here a second time, it actually would have shattered your soul if you didn't drink the tea. So uh, welcome back, I guess. And I was like, oh, that's, um, remind me to drink the tea next time I go out. <laughs> like, uh, listen, I'm gonna drink the tea next time. Um, but uh, I, I will say, that's not just regular tea. Donna be taking lessons from Mabakio. Don't forget that. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm just saying. And and like I said, man, Donna brings some much needed levity to this crazy ass episode. Uh, I feel like I'm calming down just talking about Donna. Honestly, it's funny that Subaru says like, I feel weirdly calm. Cause the instant I saw that, that, that friggin' Windows background ask setting, I was like, you know what, man? Me too. And I've had my second cup of coffee. I'm still drinking it, but like, I, I felt like, like I was, that I, like that my witch factor <laughs> was, was calm, right? I felt calm just being with Donna because Donna got that common presence. She is a bit spooky. I will say that she has a spooky aura, but that's why we love Donna. But at the same time, like, yeah, she does bring this vague sense of calm with her. And after the absolute insanity, I needed that. And I needed this conversation that she has with him like this. This, because it's funny, right? It starts with like her getting flustered with Subaru when he requests to remember her. My man drinks the, her tea, which she even says like, you just drank my bodily fluids. And I was like, why you guys say it like that? Like it sounds even worse when you say it like that. But he's like, I forgot. And I'm like, yeah, maybe we remember that next time, my G. Um, but I was like, damn Subaru. Like just this funny little exchange between the two of them. And then like Subaru tries to explain like, listen, like there's no way that you would know the shit I've been through unless you've been watching this whole time, which means you should know something that I can't tell you. And she's like, oh, really? Try me. And I was like, bruh, don't forget who she is. She's the witch of greed, dude. She wants to know everything. Of course she'd been new. But in my head, I'm like, there's no way he can tell her because we saw what happened with Amelia. But maybe she can know without like being told. I don't know. But no. Nah. Subaru tells her, like, I can return by death, and she's fine. And I'm like, okay, maybe it's because she's a witch. I don't know. Um, regardless, she's fine. And I'm like, all right. And it's this beautiful moment where he says, like, I can return by death. And she's like, yeah, I know. I've been watching you, dude. I know. And he's like, no, you don't understand. I, I can, when I die, I come back. The world restarts. I can return by death. And she's like, yeah, I know. And he's like, no, 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 you don't know. I can return by death. And she's like, bruh, I know. And I'm like, Subaru, why are you repeating yourself? Right? And then he, he keeps repeating himself, repeating himself, repeating himself. And I go, why are you? Oh, right. Because I'm like, oh, I just connected that this man has never verbalized this. And he breaks down crying. And again, Yusuke Kobayashi being a goddamn top tier, top of the line, say you, the sheer turmoil in the voice but also this like weird sense of like, oh my God, somebody gets it. Like I can actually talk to somebody about this. He's never gotten to verbalize the pain that he's been through physically, emotionally, and mentally. My boy is messed up. And that little like, I know, like even seeing like the scratchy words and you know when the scratchy words, when the scratchy kanji comes up, you know some shit's about to be serious. But Donna just says like, yeah, I know. And I've been watching you this whole time, but I still want you to tell me how you feel because I want to know everything. I'm the witch of greed after all. And that's where we end the episode. We, it's a beautiful, B-E-E-A, beautiful, beautiful scene. And I'm not gonna lie to you, at this point I started crying and I was like legit like tears roll because everything that my boy Subaru has been through, we've been with him through the shit like we've been with him this whole time so to see him finally get somebody where he can just like unwind tell them that he can return by death and they don't just die you know like this moment is everything for him and it was it was good to see and i, just, I was just kind of moved because i just found it to be so beautifully directed masahara watanabe knows how to bring emotional weight 
to like the scenes that truly need it. And this was one where like just the weight behind the scene and then like the ease into the credits, it was really beautifully done. And I gotta say, before we wrap up the video, um, that I did mention earlier that there was a dynamic that reminded me of something from Lord of the Rings. It's not one-to-one, -one, but it, it's, you know, I, I wrote it down in my notes. I thought about it. I I am a little hobbit man uh, in, the, in the avatar that you guys see. I am a hobbit, so it's worth noting that these two, Subaru and Donna, um, kind of, and I do mean kind of, but it, like, I thought it was interesting. They kind of have, like, a Frodo-Galadriel type of dynamic where... I don't really see it as like romantic, but one is this sort of hero who's being put through the ringer, whereas the other one is this sort of ethereal being who sort of comes to them in moments of need and they are forever linked, their destinies intertwined by the journey that the main character is going through. And they do have that sort of Frodo-Galadriel type relationship, only if Galadriel sort of had the hots for Frodo, which like, <laughs> Definitely didn't happen, but, but you know, this is like ReZero spin on it. Um, but it did give me that vibe. Like, there's so many scenes in Lord of the Rings where, like, Frodo is, like, suddenly visited by the visage of Galadriel. And it's, like, at times of great need. And this is similar in, in ReZero, where Subaru needed a moment of clarity, a moment of calm, and somebody to just... It, like share a bond with share what he's feeling with somebody and somebody who might have some idea of what he's going through right now and even though i don't think that she can return by death i don't think that like she has the same power or anything it's just that she is somebody ethereal who he can talk to about this shit and again that's very galadriel like frodo and galadriel have a lot in common since they're both ring bearers and she knows to some degree what it is that he's going through uh, not one-to-one, -one, like, like not completely understands, but she gets an idea of what Frodo is going through. And I get that with Subaru and, and Donna. Like, I really, really get that. Maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I just look for Lord of the Rings connections because it's my favorite story in the whole wide world. But that is the connection that I kind of noticed this week. We didn't really get time to get into this, but there's two things that I, I feel like I should address this week. Um, before we wrap up the video, that being the talk with Rosewall, which is interesting. Uh, I definitely want to know what the whole, like, I am that person thing is. Um, and then Subaru asking Rosewall, like, are you an enemy? And Subaru responds, like, I am an ally to all of you. And I'm like, okay, I think he is, but he's going about it in sort of like a Loki-esque way, where it's like, the ends will justify the means. Like, you all want to get to the same end goal, but Rosewall's willing to do some more nefarious shit to get there. That's the vibe that, that he gives me. And he's my husbando, so of course I'm gonna give him the benefit of the doubt. The other thing to mention is the nicknames. Um, like uh, in this uh, this this video, I called uh, Patrish Patty. Um, I know like somebody left an angry comment saying like, how come you just just call it Patrish? Why is it stupid nicknames? If you don't like the nicknames, you don't like the nicknames. Um, I give characters nickname nicknames just because I think it's cute and it makes me feel more connected to them. Like in God of High School, and calling instead of calling Mori Mori. I call him Mo. It's not that I can't pronounce Mori. It's just Mo is fun to me. Like, I just think it's nice. I want to get, like, I want to feel more connected. Um, like, Day is Han. Like, Day Wee, like, Han Day Wee just becomes Han to me. Like, just because it's how I associate with them. In the same way that you likely have nicknames for your faves or friends of yours or your friggin' Pokemon. <laughs> I like to give nicknames. It's just the thing. If that bugs you, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not. But, like, I don't know. I'm Canadian, so I feel the need to say sorry. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna give nicknames. If that bugs you, I don't know, man. Deal with it or unsub. I, I don't know what to tell you. But with that said, everybody, I'm gonna wrap up my thoughts here. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. And if you did, don't forget to boop that up snoot and share if you care. And of course, as always, I have to give a big, big thank you to the good folks in the T-Squadron. Look at these beautiful people. Look at these beautiful names. And hey, if you'd like to join these beautiful names floating across your screen, then there are two ways to do so. The first way is by clicking that first link in the description to check out our Patreon page. And the second is by hitting that join button right next to the sub button which gets you some bonus stuff like some fun emotes to spam in the chat and a cool little badge next to your name in the comments so once again a big thank you to the good folks in the t squadron y'all are the true mvps the real best boys and best girls and that's it for me so until next time you stay classy anytube and wash your dang hands